Support for the Boner Planet Podcast is presented by Dead Down Wind, Tinks, Shadow Hunter Blinds, Burris Optics, Dead Ringer, The Grind, Bomar Archery, Element Outdoors, Reveal Cellular Camera, HHA and HHA USA, Black Eagle Arrows, Cobra Archery, Camp Chef, Novix Outdoors, and caffeine support provided by Deer Camp Coffee. Hey guys, and welcome to the Boner Plant Podcast. Tonight we've got Dylan Ray from Hunting 101 Podcast from Bear Archery. Uh, Dylan, how you doing, man? Man, I'm absolutely wonderful. How are you guys? Good. Can't complain. So excited to have you on. I know um, we've done some stuff in the past. I've been on your show, and, a, and, a, and a, you guys are—I mean, you guys are killing it over there, doing such a great job. And it's always interesting to me to do anything with bear archery in general, mainly because of just such heritage with that brand. And it's just so nice to um, have you doing this and working that and having that and not letting go of the stories, the hunting and all that. Cause I think it's such an important thing um, to our industry as well as the heritage of hunting and Fred bear. So anyway, tell us, how's it going? Man, it's going wonderful. And, uh, you know, that's, that's part of that. That's always been my draw to bear archery. Uh, you know, you hear so many guys say, well, my first bow was a bear, um, or the first bow I bought was a bear. And, you know, that's my story. Um, you know, the first bow that I actually put my money towards to buy was a bear bow. And, uh, and so that's what, you know, brought me into it and, uh, worked at a bow shop through college and, uh, you know, I'll be honest, uh, some of the guys in the shop made fun of the fact that I shot a bear. And so I walked away from bear archery and, and for a number of years and, and, uh, came back to them, uh, this, so this podcast originally, uh, was under the name of powder hook. I don't know if you're familiar with them at all. Uh, it was under the name of powder hook. And, uh, I kind of had the opportunity to take the podcast and run. And so bear archery had worked with the podcast for a while. And so, uh, they took it under their wing and, and, you know, what an honor, uh, it, you know, if you had to ask me as a kid, what's one company you want to work for when you grow up, it would, would have been bear archery. Uh, and, and because of that heritage, because of that history, because of that, uh, just, just rich, uh, tradition coming from bear archery. And so, you know, it's been an honor, uh, to get to work for them and, and to get to know the guys there. And, and, uh, you know, I can truly say that, that I believe that, that with the staff they have now, that, that, uh, you know, I believe that Fred Bear would be proud and I believe that he would be proud of the way they carry on his name and his legacy. And so, man, things are going absolutely wonderful. Uh, busy, of course, you know, but uh, just absolutely wonderful. So awesome, man. Yeah, Bear, Bear really has stepped up their game, right? I mean, they keep coming out with all this cool new stuff launching. I mean, they're, they're really at the forefront of where the industry is going. I mean, just the, especially with this podcast stuff and all of that. So it is quite amazing to see bear over the long, long history that they have, but then continuing to sit at the forefront of where the industry is going with technology and, and products that they're putting out and just the marketing side of things. I mean, it hasn't been until, I don't know, probably the last five or six years that company has really been coming on board with the online content and all of that stuff. And uh, it's really been really cool to see companies like bear archery putting out podcasts and content and all that kind of stuff. Tell us a little bit about like the, the history of this podcast. When did it first launch? How many episodes do you guys have? What's going on with it? Um, so it launched, um, I guess two years ago and it was under the powder hook name. And, uh, and so I worked really closely with bear archery from, from that podcast and, uh, powder hook. And I don't want to speak too much to it cause I'm not sure of everything, but, but powder hook got bought out by a, by a, a very political organization. So, basically they said you have two choices. You can either, you know, continue to host the podcast and it be uh, very, very reined in as to what you can say, how you can say it, why you can say it. And, uh, or, Pass. or we're going to give you this opportunity to take it as your own. Um, and so again, I had worked with the guys in some sort of capacity at bear for about four or five years now. And so, uh, I was real familiar with them and just knew that they were just great to work with. And so, um, you know, I just, I just thought to myself, well, if there's one person I want to take this podcast, it would be Bear. And so 
uh, I took it to them uh, and, and they took it on as their podcast. We pulled down all the old episodes. Um, and so now we're back up to about 45 underneath the bear name. So um, since the relaunch with bear archery, it's at about 45 episodes before it was, you know, maybe had 80 episodes, 90 episodes up. And so, um, but yeah, since, since the relaunch, we're sitting at 45 episodes now. So awesome. Are you guys launching on a weekly basis or what's your schedule like with it? Yes, sir. Every Wednesday morning, every Wednesday awesome. morning. And we try to do a lot of series. Um, so, so beforehand, before when it was a powder hook, it was all series, uh, which was fun. But uh, when Bear Archery took it over, we kind of, we wanted to do series, but not all be series. So uh, like we just wrapped up a traditional one-on-one series, uh, teaching you the very basics from the beginning, how to shoot a recurve, uh, how to get into hunting with a traditional bow. And so, uh, you know, we had guys like Jim Willems from the Pope and Young Club and, and Aaron Schneider and Fred, Fred Eichler and Clay Hayes. And, and uh, I mean, just, you know, we got to pull from guys who, if anybody was going to want to learn how to shoot a recurve, that's who they would want to call. Um, you know, Tom Clum from Rocky Mountain Specialty Gear and, and Harv Ebers, who was one of the founding members of Pope and Young. So just some iconic members of the traditional world we got to pull from and, and learn from these guys. And so, uh, you know, we'll do like an elk series when it gets closer to elk season. And, uh, but yeah, we, we run a lot of series, you know, teaching you from the basics. If you want to get into, you know, say, bear hunting or traditional archery or uh you know we do those series teaching you from from step one how can you get into that um but you know then then of course we just have your fun uh storytelling episodes that, that everybody likes to hear so what's what's your favorite when you so when you're doing all this different content like do you, do you like the ones like that are teaching people from the from the scratch are you liking the story ones for you as a host what's your favorite uh, both. Uh, no, that's a cop out. Um, <laughs> yes, it, I was going to call you out on it. So, you know, thanks for I calling say, out yourself. <laughs> I would say, um, I would say it's more dependent on the guest than, than the, the yeah. format of the episode. Um, you know, I mean, anytime you have Fred Eichler on, it's just a joy. Um, he's just a fun guy to talk with. Uh, he could literally talk about dirt and it'd be entertaining, uh, just cause he's so energized and has so much fun with it. Uh, no, I really do like the, the, the series um, because like with the traditional series, um, I myself, uh, when I started this series, um, I guess the first one I recorded was back in July with Jim Willems. Um, and I, I told myself, if I'm going to teach people how to shoot a recurve, uh, then I'm going to do it too. Uh, so I put down the compound. And uh, so I literally was learning from the ground up how to shoot a recurve. And uh, so you know, just like everybody else, I get to learn from world-class guys on how to shoot a recurve. So I would say I really love the series, man, just because, you know, if you're going to learn how to elk hunt, I, I mean, why not get Remy Warren to teach you how to elk hunt, you know? No doubt. Um, so, so I really like the series, man, because I get to learn new tactics, new tricks, new, um, new ways of hunting just w with everybody else as they learn, I learn. So I, I like the series, man. Well, I see that you've made the switch because I read the shirt, right? Traditional only. So, you know, it had some sort of effect on you, right? <laughs> uh, man, it has, it has eaten me up in every way possible. Uh, it really has. Blisters um, on every and, finger too? Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> no, uh, I find myself wanting to shoot 10 times more than I ever wanted to shoot my compound. And, uh, and Fred, Fred uh, was the one that shed some light on that. He's like, well, it's because when you're shooting a compound, you're either shooting good and you're satisfied or you're shooting bad and you're pissed. Uh, but with a recurve, you're either shooting good and you're stinking pumped or you're shooting bad and you're satisfied. <laughs> so it's like, there's, he's like, there's no euphoric high with a compound, you know, but, but with a recurve, when you hit the bullseye, it's like, Holy cow, I did it, you know? Um, and so then you want to keep shooting. And so it, it's, it's consumed every part of me, man. Uh, I, I, I love it. Um, it definitely is a struggle for sure. Um, but I did, you know, I wasn't quite ready deer season. I started in July kind of playing with it and tinkering around with it. And I wasn't quite ready with deer season uh, when it rolled around. So I did shoot my buck in, here in Kansas last year with a, with a compound. But, you know, I can say by this point, uh, deer season this year will be strictly with a recurve. So I love it. I love it. I love that it's traditional fun, side of things. There's a lot of guys out there um, <laughs> that have switched back to it, you know, that, that started with it many years ago went to a compound and now they're back at it. Just, just like what you said for the fun of it. 
So uh, that's awesome, man. I hear a lot of both actually. I hear a lot of people say they did switch to it, can't get a deer, so they stopped. And they went back to crossbow now. <laughs> so, yeah. so I think it's just all about you know you you and your drive and what you want to do. I mean, it's like any like I I always tell myself like oh I should pick up traditional and do it right, but eh, let's be honest, I'm not gonna <laughs> do it. I'm not gonna get it done. It's not that I won't take it out with me. The odds of me hitting a deer with it are slim to none. And I I just I'm under the I've seen shooters with traditional that could outshoot a compound bow shooter. That's how good they are with instinct shooting, which is incredible. But the amount I practice and stuff, I would not feel comfortable or justify shooting it at a deer <laughs> without <laughs> yeah. something more that I'm no, better with, I guess. You said you said you got to find that drive, man. And uh, I'll tell you, I, uh, I was on the phone with John Dudley one time and I said, well, I'm shooting a recurve now. And he said, oh, I enjoy accuracy. And, uh, and, and for me, that's my drive. And now let me preference this for all you traditional guys up there. Who don't get pissed at John Dudley. He was saying he himself isn't accurate with a, with a traditional bow. That's what he was saying. He wasn't saying you can't be, he wasn't saying that, that they're unethical. So don't, don't start that stuff. But uh, <laughs> that was my drive. I'm like, Oh, well, I'm going to show you, you know, I'm going to prove to you that I can be accurate. Um, so that was my drive. And I told him that on the phone the other day and, and uh, he just laughed. He said, well, I didn't know that would have a lasting impact on you. You know, I thought it was just a joke. But uh, <laughs> but I said, yeah, man, I, uh, you know, that was kind of my, my push into, uh, into you can do this, you know. But, uh, no, I'll tell you, you know, I had those doubts, too, of will it ever get done? Can I ever get it done? Um, I mean, obviously, I just I struggle with it a ton. And, uh, and I really got to the point where I was super confident at 20 yards. And, uh, you know, I just started looking back on the years, and I'm like, man, you know, average deer that I've shot is, you know, 24 yards, maybe, um, maybe even lower. And so I just thought to myself, well, I'm already ready for that. Uh, so I took it to Texas with me and I didn't get to shoot a whitetail, but I shot a hog. And, uh, you know, once I shot that hog, it was almost just like a, okay, you're good. Like you can do this, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, once that first animal uh, was harvested, it was almost like, okay, you have nothing else to worry about now. So um, how, how did it do against that hog, man? Those are, those are some tough animals to put down sometimes. Uh, well, I can't say one way or the other. Um, and I, <laughs> here's why. So I shot the pig and, uh, and it ran into the thickest stuff you've ever seen. And it was already dark. By the time that I walked up to the edge of the brush, it was already dark. And so I started tracking blood and, uh, and I get to where I just couldn't go any further. Uh, now the whole time that I was tracking this pig, I could hear it. So I could hear, I could hear it squalling and I could hear it like the final death squall. So I know it died. Um, and I know it died just 20 yards from where I was at, but I just couldn't get any further into the brush. Um, so I know it did enough to kill him, but I don't know. I don't know. You know, I didn't get to look at exit wounds. I didn't get to look at, at entry wounds. Um, you know, I'm shooting the, uh, the single bevel, um, from cutthroat broadheads, which is made by Tom Clum and, and, uh, I got them sharpened up really well. And so they penetrate really good. Uh, but I didn't get to look at it at the animal. So I just, I don't know, you know, and, and, uh, I don't want to lie to you. So no, 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 that's all good, man. <laughs> I could have shot it in the neck for all I know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. there, there's been times where we're out and we, we've done a hog hunter too. And, um, you know, you take the shot and, uh, you, it, it's a, I mean, it's a beautifully placed shot, but that thing, it just won't go down. Right. So it takes you know, another one or two to put it down sometimes. So that's what I was yeah. wondering, but yeah, one shot and you, and you did it. That's a, that's a good effect. For How sure. many yards was that yeah. shot? Uh, about 17, 17 yards. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's I didn't really get cool. to, I mean, I didn't range it. Um, but I would say 17. I mean, after I walked it off, you know, uh, I kind of just counted in my head as I walked back to where I shot the pig and, and it was about 17 yards ish. Now, did it run away from you or did, did it barrel right for you? Now at first, man, when I, when I heard that pig squall, I thought it was coming right at me. Uh-huh. Uh, so, so, so we, I was down there with Alec from bear archery and, uh, and we were filming and we were on camera and, uh, you see me run backwards like a little girl. Um, and then I realized the pig's not coming. So I stopped and, 
Yeah. But I started I started backpedaling pretty quick when I thought that pig was coming out after me. <laughs> they can they can be mean little dudes, I'll tell you, man. Yes. I, I had one um I, I'd shot it. I, I want to say it was probably at about 30 yards with a crossbow. And this thing, like instead of you know, like a white tail, it's usually typically moving away from the sound and, and from the direction that the shot came in. Not this thing, man. It turned, came straight at me, <laughs> and I'm like backed up against this tree, got nowhere to go. And I just, and I, you know, it's a crossbow. There's no reloading or anything like that in time. So right. I just kind of stood there and uh, literally about six feet in front of me, it turned and went to my side and like, oh man, that was a close one. <laughs> it can be a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So, so tell us about some of the guests on the show. Who have you had on so far and who's in the lineup coming up? Uh, so right in the pipeline, we've got Matt Jennings from the game. Uh, he comes out tomorrow. Um, well, I don't know when this episode is going to air, but uh, he comes out tomorrow from when we're recording. Uh, then next week, we've got uh, uh, Zach Farrenbaugh from the Hunting Public. Um, we've got uh, who else on the pipeline? Um, I want to have I want to have Clay Hayes on again. I uh, just announced announced that he was on season eight of Alone. And uh, so I want to have him back on to talk about his experience there. Um, just recently, you know, we wrapped up the traditional series not too long ago. Um, so we had all those guys on. Uh, did a really fun just storytelling episode uh, with with Clay Hayes, Aaron Snyder, Fred Eichler, and Jim Willems. Uh, so that was just absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, we've had uh, I had uh, Jordan Jonas on, who is the season six winner of Alone. Uh, first guy on alone history to kill a big game animal while on the show. So that was, that was pretty cool to hear him talk about. Uh, was he many, the one that shot the moose or no? Yeah. 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 How many I people, wanted, that was so amazing. Absolutely. That was amazing. awesome. How many people could be on your show at once with your uh, systems? Four. Very cool. Cause I was just going to say, we, we, we would love to be on with the alone people. Cause we've had, we've had naked and afraid people on before and, and different shows and alone's like one of our favorites. It's so, it's so fun to talk about like how they did those things. And like, I just think it's so yeah. interesting. So detailed, uh, man. I'm super anxious to see Clay Hayes. Um, I think that he'll just do phenomenal. Uh, you know, of course he can't tell how he did yet, but uh, it's funny when he was on the show, I was asking all the guys, you know, how was your last hunting season? And, uh, and I thought it was so strange. He was like, I didn't get to hunt much. I was working on a pretty big project. And I'm like, man, what kind of project would you be working on that didn't involve hunting? And uh, so, like, I was literally racking my brain, uh, racking my brain. And then, of course, Aaron Schneider in the background goes, I know what he's talking about. And I'm like, what? What's going on here? You know? And, uh, and then, so finally, then he announced that he was on the show. And I'm like, ah, that's why he didn't get to hunt. I'm like, well, if you didn't get the hunt, you must have lasted decently amount of time, you know. Right. Uh, it's not like you went out for ten days, or you would have came back and hunted. So, I'm anxious to see how it unfolds, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that show is pretty awesome, man. I, I've watched several seasons of it, and it is. I mean, these that guys and girls, not just guys, so super impressive with the skills that they have. Like, I would be done in the first two hours when my feet got cold and I didn't have foot warmers <laughs> in my boots. So, you know, tons of credit to them for sure. I'll never Amazing. forget the couple seasons ago where the guy he was like an ex-military guy and he gets there and he, the bear <laughs> yeah he sees a bear in the first 30 minutes and he's, he's like out. i'm out he's like i'm out <laughs> of your calls in. i'm like are you serious right now <laughs> uh, no i saw one guy though he saw a bear and he's like man i'm not a hunter so i don't have any kind of weapon but i'm gonna go after it and he starts chasing the bear <laughs> yeah and uh, I saw that guy. his reasoning was actually legit he's like you know i want him to know this is my camp and you know whatever but uh but man i was like he went right after it with no weapon no nothing yeah it's it's pretty impressive to last that long with what what like think they get like 10 items or something like yeah. that um and that's okay. it. I mean, to build your own shelter, have your own heat source. There are some, and there's some crazy things that happened on that show, like some big fires, you know, some major injuries and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's yeah. some real legit stuff. So I tell you Man, what, that, that guy that won the last one, that was, he was incredible. Killed the one that killed the uh, muskox and stuff. Holy cow. Awesome. Yeah. No, I'll tell you, man. And then you watch it and you're like, good Lord. Like I couldn't build that shelter in my backyard with a chainsaw <laughs> much less with Not a stinking axe and and a tarp like 
I'm like, good <laughs> Lord, man. Uh, no, those guys are crazy, dude. Yeah. Uh, but man, that broke my heart for, for, you said the big fires, you know, when some of them have like a shelter fire and it's the middle of winter and I'm like, dude, you were set up like you had everything. Yeah. And you stinking just caught your shelter on fire and now you're done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No it'll doubt, be so no hard. Doubt. It'll be so hard to do that show. I, I do feel as an outdoorsman, I could last maybe a week. I don't know. I just don't see the how you can handle the mental part from like oh, being no. actually alone at some point. Now, to be honest <laughs> with you, I do feel uh, any of us here uh, on this would actually probably do pretty well in the sense that you wouldn't feel alone because we're always talking to cameras. We could, I think that any of us here could actually, that would be very therapeutic because I do it now. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not I so sure I feel day, alone. I spend all day in my little man cave office anyways, just sitting here talking. So yeah, if they had no. internet with the access to TikTok, they would be good, man. Oh. We'd, we'd see a lot of <laughs> content come out of that. You know, I'll, tell you, I'll <laughs> tell you what, you know, Kevin just mentioned it and he said, uh, Kevin said the last guy that won and the first time he spoke on camera, I was like, this dude automatically has my vote for winner because he said, I don't have a family. I live alone. You know, so a lot of those guys, like one guy had a one-year-old. I'm like, there's no way yeah. that I can make it away from my yeah. one-year-old. I'm like, yeah. so the dude who has nobody back home, uh, he already had my vote. Cause I'm like, that takes away the, that takes away the, the, the mental play of the game and, and now you're just really who can succeed you know yeah, yeah i don't know man after this last winter with covid and the kids and the wife working at home and being at home for school i don't, <laughs> don't know i think I, I think i could last like six months <laughs> don't say it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what the people that amaze me are the ones that know so much about plants that they can yeah. live that, yeah. a couple yeah. ladies on there were amazing i mean they yeah. make medicine they make food it's like at least that's that's a talent Yes, or it can go is. opposite and you could you you make a mistake and it could cost you big time. <laughs> well, it was crazy though. The the one the one in which the guy shot the moose, the way that that ended with with the moose, I mean, he was on the verge of not winning, right? I mean, his body was still even yet, even though he had this huge food source, he was starving to death. He was starving to death because there was no fat content in the yeah. it was all protein. <laughs> They always let them animals come and steal their good stuff. I'd be yeah, like no sleeping doubt. on top of it. No <laughs> doubt. Well, You'd be going with it. <laughs> and, and what was interesting, I finally got to hear his reasoning, um, you know, when he was on the show. So he killed the first Wolverine. Well, the second Wolverine that came back, you can only kill one Wolverine there. Uh, so uh, it's like, there's there nothing I could do. There's you rules. Know, he said, I tried to, yeah. I tried to scare yeah. it off. I tried to, um, but I couldn't kill it. So. I was like, well, man, that sucks. You know, just turn your camera off. And no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no doubt. No yeah, doubt. can you imagine? Oh, he'd be... <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. You, you, they don't, I mean, shows are great and all that stuff. But again, it's, it's all, it's not real life. So there's rules yeah. behind the rules for sure. There's the rules yeah. are always in place, no matter where you're at. I remember we were watching, we had, um, we had the guy on from Fat Guys in the Woods years ago when that show was just on air and started to do well. And that was one of the things he told us. He goes, we can't cut this tree down, can't touch this plant specifically. We couldn't touch this or that. And I mean, it was very interesting, like when you hear it um, from that perspective, you know, like, oh, wow, didn't think of that, you know. For sure. But that is exciting. I mean, talking to, t talking to good people about their life experiences and having them share with that, just to bring it back to what you said earlier, makes the podcast go so much quicker and easier because you, you enjoy listening to it. Yeah. Right. It, you know, it, it's, I love the ones where like, you can ask a single question and 20 minutes later, they're still telling this story and you're just listening to it. Cause it's so yeah. good. You know, it's <laughs> awesome. No, I, man, you know, there's been a few times and obviously I'm not going to name any names, but, uh, there's been a few times where like I grew up idolizing somebody and like that, you know, I, I watched them on TV growing up and, and, uh, and then I get them on the podcast and it's just like, you know, I want to shoot myself and I'm like, good Lord, this is horrible. Um, and you know, I'll tell you to, like today, um, today we did one for Pope and Young with Michael Waddell and, uh, that's somebody I grew up, you know, just idolizing and, and, uh, and watching on TV. And, you know, for me, he was that, I was at that age where he was the guy, you know, and uh, I worried about that. Like, I was like, man, I wonder if he's going to suck. And then I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to like him anymore. Not and, Waddell. Uh, no, yeah. one of the he's greatest amazing. guests of all time, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's our, he's our keynote speaker at, at Pope and Young this year. And, uh, I, you know, after that, I'm just, 
I'm, after today, I'm just so excited to get to spend time with him and talk with him because, man, you know, he's one of those guys that didn't disappoint, you know, uh, yeah. and, and some guys do. And, and, you know, again, I'm not going to name any names, but uh, put it this way, they're definitely better in front of Dave a camera Thomas. than they are behind a mic. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no Dave doubt. Thomas. No, I'll, I'll tell you somebody who doesn't disappoint is uh ted nugent man when oh my had, god uh, back several years ago when we when we had kind of first started the podcast we had an interview lined up with his wife right so we're on this podcast and we're all excited about it. there's like four of us around the, you know the recording equipment and we're talking to her and all that kind of stuff and naturally he just comes up right he's gonna come up in every conversation and she's like oh yeah you guys want to talk to him we're like well, yeah. Right. So she hands the phone to him and he gets on the line and he's just 10 minutes of F bombs and <laughs> stories. And it was, it was just such a cool experience. But it was fun. Never talk to us again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take the one time. Yeah. Yeah. That Absolutely. was fun. Though, man. Was uh, fun. No, I'll tell you that's, that's exactly how, how Fred Eichler was for me. You know, he, he talked to you like he'd known you his whole life and uh, just, energetic fun excited and uh you know just a, a really a really great guy and yeah. uh you know same with same with Walt L today you know um just the kind of guy that treats you like you know he's known you his entire life which you know for somebody of his stature says a lot and yep. uh you know that's important for me is you know they don't speak down to you they don't speak like you know they're doing you a favor but they speak to you like hey we're all in this together we're one big happy family we're friends and, uh, and, and so, you know, to go back to, to that, that first question about, you know, what episodes are the best, you know, I would just say, if you have a guest that, that literally values being on your show, um, it, it's the best. And, uh, yeah. because they don't, they don't look at it as I'm doing you a favor or, uh, that, you know, they're, they're better than the rest of the world, but, but more so like, I'm just talking hunting, uh, which yeah. is my, my favorite thing to do anyway. So, and um, I think people can see through it too, as well on the show. hundred percent. As your 100%. consumer listening to it, you're going to see through that. And that's why it's important in my mind when they do the show, no matter who it is that, you know, they are down to earth, like Waddell is that Waddell has been one of our favorite guests for sure. Over time. I mean, he, he, he could tell stories for days and like, they're so good. Every one of his stories are hilarious and they bring I mean, a lot of up, just a I lot of positivity, Arkansas. you know, I grew up in Arkansas. So I just love his little redneck sayings, man. I was just like, <laughs> every time I was just like, I'm back home, you know, I'm like, yeah. I feel you. Uh, that's, you know, that's what my mom said, or that's what my dad used to say, or uh, so that's what I love the most. <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. I'll tell you one thing. I, I will say this about the podcasting and the industry, and I, I one of the things I've enjoyed most about podcasting, I think, you know, it's we've all have, I think, is just talking to everybody in the industry, and it's just a great way to really come together. I think it's and, and share like different stories and stuff. I mean you're from Arkansas. We're from Michigan, right? I mean, it's just like, we're all, it's all over the place, but it's a great industry. And I think that's one of the fun things um, is just having that communication and be able to talk and, you know, joke about things. And like Waddell still owes me some beer for God's sakes. I got to text him. Now that you said that I get like, Oh, where's that beer you owe me? <laughs> I wanted that blue beer from Georgia. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just, but it's just fun. And I think it's, and like, for me, when I grew up, I was watching Bill Jordan, I was watching Tyler when he was a kid, you know, growing up. So it was cool to have him on our show and talk real tree and all this stuff. It was just so interesting to go from like being that perspective of watching a TV growing up to all of a sudden those people are in front of you, talking to you, engaging you, texting you. I mean, it's really interesting yeah. in, in that sense. No, I, you know, I was telling somebody about this the other day and, uh, you know, I was just going about my day the other day and I get a phone call and it says no caller ID. I was like, gosh, stinging spam, you know? <clears throat> and so I answer it and I'm like, hello. And uh, he said, Hey, this is Dylan. I said, yes. And he said, this is Chuck Adams. And I'm like, Oh my Lord. <laughs> like I'm like falling back in my chair. And uh, you know, I'm, I literally am acting like a little girl on the phone with him. I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know, I, I read this magazine one time and you wrote it and oh my Lord, you know, you're the best there is. And uh, but I'm telling you, man, he spoke to me like, and I don't want to say anything like that'll put him down age wise, but he spoke to me. He's like a, a grandfather, you know, like, be I mean, careful, just a... be careful. <laughs> <laughs> but he spoke to me like somebody who, who valued my opinions, who valued my, you know, I mean, and just, you know, just a, a fantastic, genuine guy. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm like, man, these are the type of dudes that make up the industry. I'm proud to be a part of, you know? 
No um, doubt. And I, I, we see the same thing, man, is, is that the, the best podcasts and the most genuine ones are the ones that they want to share the love of what they do with everybody else. It's not about holding it to themselves, you know, and, hold, and holding those stories for themselves. It's about sharing that with other people to hopefully get them excited, you know, and, and that's something yeah. that we work for um, before we did the podcast and everything, right? We wanted to build this community to bring hunters together and, and share stories to, to continue the tradition of, you know, hunting and bow hunting and all that. And uh, it's so cool when you get somebody that shares those values and you can tell just right off the bat, man, that they just want to share stories, share their experiences, not for themselves, but for other people. So. Yeah. Cool. And that's, you know, that's one thing that, you know, the hunting one-on-one podcast was designed to not only teach, but to inspire. Uh, so if you tell a story, I want it to be a story where, where somebody listens to it and they think, man, I've always wanted to try bow hunting. Yeah. Uh, and, and now because of that story, I'm going to give it a shot, you know, or, 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 you know, even more specific, I've always wanted to go on an elk hunt and that story, like, yeah, I'm in, you know? Um, so, so that's really, you know, inspiring stories, not just stories to, that make you look good, not just stories that make you, oh, you shot the elk at, you know, 93 yards in a crosswind, you know, I don't care about that stuff, but I care about the stories where it's going to stop and make dudes go, oh, I got to give that a shot, like, I got to try that, you know, uh, which for me, that, I mean, that's what, you know, hearing those stories of, of guys who, who, you know, started with a recurve that for me, that was like, okay, yeah, I'm doing it. And, uh, you know, I told Snyder that I'm like, man, watching your public switch to a recurve and, and the struggles and the ups and downs, that's part of what made me say, you know what, I'm going to try it. Um, because I saw you enjoy it. I saw you, although it sucks at times, I saw you, uh, push through and get better and, and, you know, succeed at it. And so I think if people are genuine enough, uh, to tell stories where people are truly inspired, then, it, then it'll make all the world a difference, you know? No doubt. One of my yeah. favorite questions to ask um, the different people that we have on, and sometimes they're not like big names in the hunting industry, or sometimes they work for a company and they're, and they're a product guy, right? They're a marketing guy or a sales guy. But one, one question that we always like to ask them is how they got started hunting, right? And it's just so cool that like when you ask them how, what, what got them into hunting, the smile that comes on their face and they're so ready to share that experience, whether it was, you know, their buddy that got them hunting, their grandpa, their dad, their brother, their sister, whatever it was, or whatever turned them on to hunting. Um, they just had this smile on their face that like kind of takes them back and like, everybody's got that story. Why did you yeah. start? Who got you started? And it's just a fun time to like, go back and look at, uh, you know, all the interactions that you had over the years and how you got into it. So it's fun. You know, for me, um, I don't have like a cool story, you know, it's pretty much just, you know, my dad hunted. And, uh, when I finally showed interest, he said, well, let's go hunting. Um, but what, what for me is even cooler is, um, my sister, when she met her, her future husband, uh, you know, I was a 10, 11 year old kid. Uh, maybe I, you know, I remember I'm about 13, 14, I don't know, but I was a young kid, impressionable teenager. And, uh, and he was a bow hunter. And so I remember the first time he came to my house, um, he pulled out this Matthew Z seven extreme. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, Oh snap. Like, dude, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Uh, and, and up until that point, now my dad was a bow hunter, but thanks to Chuck Adams, my dad still shot like an 87 point game getter. Cause that's what Chuck Adams <laughs> shot when he shot a big bull moose or something. My dad like 75. Yeah. So, so he still shot like an, uh, a 1987 point game getter. Uh, and so I, like, that was my perception of archery it was like, it's old school. It's for old dudes, you know, like my dad. Uh, and then I met this cool guy that was dating my sister. And he pulls out a Matthew Z7 Extreme blacked out, you know, and I'm like, whoa. And so I'm watching him shoot and I'm like, this is what I want to do. And so I found a bear charge online. Uh, you know, I paid like 200 bucks for it. But man, I went all out on that thing. I'm like, you know, I got to get custom strings. I need sights. I need to drop nice. away. I need, you know, I just went all out. And uh, and so that's what really got me hooked was, uh, was, was seeing a young guy. Um, who made archery cool. Um, and so, you know, that's what, that's what really said, made me think, you know, I want to be a bow hunter. And so it's really cool for me to, to get to share these stories with my brother-in-law, uh, who really was the one who got me into it. And, uh, 
and, and, and gave me that itch, you know? And so, um, it's cool to get to share these stories with him. And, and, and I feel like he almost finds pride in it. Like, yeah, I help you get started. You know, I help you sight it in your first bow. I help you. I helped you drag out your first deer you shot with a bow, you know? And so it's, it's, it's a really cool thing to get to share with him. You know, now that I've found uh, a living in the archery world, um, I don't know if we've shared that yet, but, but, uh, my main job is the marketing director for Pope and Young. So, um, and so to be able to work in the, in the archery industry for a living and get to share those stories with him, the guy who inspired me to take on archery, uh, it, it's a special thing for me, you know? Absolutely. And Very I, cool. I think you're right on. We all need to make archery great again. Yeah. <laughs> so I owe my, I owe my hunting beginnings to my dad and then I owe my bow hunting, uh, beginnings to my brother-in-law. That's awesome, awesome man. All right. Well, Dylan, thanks for joining us. And, uh, you know, guys, check out uh, Bear Archery Hunting 101 podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, because uh, I'm sure it's everywhere, I would assume. Yep. And it's on Bear's <laughs> YouTube. So if you, you, know, oh, if you just want to cool. go to Bear's YouTube, it's on, it's on the Bear Archery YouTube channel too. So yeah, check cool. that. Also go to beararchery.com. You guys can check out the Redemption, one of the coolest bows we shot this year. Uh, actually one of my favorites and we did a bow build on it as well uh, you can check out dylan's favorite bows and the trads they have a ton of those and uh, obviously one of the original maker well, the the original maker i believe uh with, with fred bear himself and also then they have trophy ridge cajun archery and uh, sick broadhead so they have a lot going on we just tested some of those sick broadheads actually tim and i did about a week ago tim was it yeah in the ballistics gel that was yeah, which one did you test f3 and f4 oh man and I have to say, I was blown away because the, uh, I believe it was the F4, um, mm -hmm. that had such depth penetration. I was blown away by the cut and the depth of that thing. Um, the channel that it did. Very exciting. I, I, was, I was busy cooking you lunch while you were Correct. shooting with James. <laughs> that is <laughs> But I saw the aftermath and the channel was pretty impressive. Now, yes. I'll tell you, I, I, for the longest time, I've not been a an expandable guy. Uh, I, I've been a fixed guy for the better part of 10 years and yep. uh now they released the sk2 um which which won you know best broadhead of the year or whatever it won from field and stream and so i'm like well I'm, excuse me i'm like well i better give it a shot um and so i shot it and uh i was impressed by the way it was shooting but uh but then i went out and shot and uh i shot a big mature kansas whitetail and i knew i shot it a bit forward and I'm like, well, crap, I should have had stinking fixed blades, you know. Um, and I find the deer, and that that expandable had busted through both shoulders. No way. Uh, wow. of, a that's giant, impressive. of a giant, you know, mature. Yeah, that's uh, very Kansas impressive. Kansas-bodied whitetail. And so I was like, man, I'm a believer. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> I did still go back to fixed blades, but <laughs> I did yeah. go back to fix. But I was, I, I'll say, man, I was impressed. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm a fixed blade guy myself, but I shoot traditionally crossbow. So, I, you know, the speed and the power through those things, I just like the uh, the fixed black. I'm, I'm a guy that, and, and there's nothing wrong with mechanicals. Don't get me wrong. So you want to shoot them, shoot them. I'm not coming down on it. This is just me personally. I like to eliminate any potential issue from going on. And to me, fixed blades do that a little bit. Um, but I think the expandables have come so much out there now. And I'm talking about like 10 years ago versus today. Um, it's really hard to find a bad expandable. Um, or mechanical yeah. for that matter compared to a fixed blade there's a lot of good broadheads out there and sick man when when we put them <laughs> sick when we put those uh those broadheads through the through, through the gel it was sick it yeah. was absolutely amazing yeah it's pretty cool you know i will say this too bear archie's been holding out on us on the uh crossbows because they've been all sold out their new crossbow the impact so we've been pushing them <laughs> we've been pushing the headquarters there like we gotta get this thing going like we don't have any they're gone man they're not even we can't even get them they're sold out. you know so that's something coming tim that i'm really excited for you to try yeah. out and play with you and kevin because i think when you guys see this thing and shoot it it's gonna look sick and have a lot of power behind it and i think people forget that bear makes crossbows because they don't push it a huge amount you don't see it a lot but that is a that is a big thing they do and they, they i mean they make a cool looking crossbow that's for sure well that and that was going to be my closing comment to you dylan is i can't wait to listen to your crossbow segment for your podcast <laughs> so you let me know yeah no it, it'll come man it'll come for sure um awesome have you shot the uh have you shot the legit the the little the the legit <laughs> yes man, sir i got i got one of those for my wife and uh oh that's a bad idea she can conceal <laughs> that thing <laughs> i you know 
I, I, I'll tell you what, I was like, man, I better put it out to 70 and put it at 28 and just shoot it, you know, at least once. <laughs> and I'm like, God, for a, you know, $300 bow fully set up, that right there is a shooter. Yeah, um, for sure. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm still shooting the Redemption. If I do shoot a uh, compound, it is the Redemption. Uh, but, man, for a budget bow, that thing is a is a stinking good bow. Awesome. That's for sure. Yeah. And I think one of the bows we have a lot of fun with around here that we still have fun with, and I think you guys, they sent them to us maybe, maybe one last year, the year before another one is the Desire Pistol Crossbows. Yes. <laughs> we have a blast yes. with those things here. We had a little shootout in the studio with that. Dave, uh, he, he, he did win, but I swear <laughs> he sabotaged my sight, my little red dot. <laughs> hey, at least I'm I hit the... Buddy. Go i've got a buddy who shoots barn pigeons with him religiously That's awesome. like all the time dude uh he'll send me so pictures fun. of pigeons all the time and and uh, his little crossbow laid over him like a like a trophy photo and i'm like dude you're crazy <laughs> those things are fun man for sure all right dylan thanks man we appreciate you jumping on with us and uh we'll see you soon i'm sure absolutely thank you guys so much